Hello, friends, and welcome back in for another episode of Vol Club Confidential. It's episode 12 this week, starring Joe Milton, the man with the big right arm. He'll join us in a moment. But first, we're joined by Spire CEO James Clawson. James, you've had the watch parties in and around Tennessee for basketball. You had the tailgate this past weekend for the Texas game. What's the response been like uh, as the Volunteer Club continues to grow? Yeah, well, first of all, welcome back to the mainland, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a good time. Um, yeah, so obviously great feedback from from Texas, from sure. the Texas event. We probably had almost 200 people there. Um, you know, really good group of people. I think it was it was different because it was in Pratt Pavilion, so um, maybe a space that a lot of people haven't got to see. Um, so it was really cool. We we're, were excited to do that. Hopefully we can do that again at some point, but we'll have more watch parties. Hopefully we'll have some stuff in, in Nashville for the SEC basketball tournament as well. You've started to release more and more um – you know, signees for the Volunteer Club Signature Series, um, you know, over the last few weeks. What's been the response like, you know, on social media as you announce, you know, James Pierce or Josh Josephs or some of those players? Yeah, I think for us it was really important to show fans, you know, where their money's going. And so that's why we wanted to, you know, promote those guys and, and release them as we signed them. And so it's obviously been great because, you know, we now have the ticker on our website and so – you know, our memberships have continued to, to climb steadily over the last, you know, 30 days since the Orange Bowl. And so so it's been been cool to see that. And I think there's been a lot of, you know, whether it's been VolQuest or whether it's social media, you know, people challenging other fans to join. And, and you know, it's it's been great. Well, you've got a lot of uh, a lot of support the last, you know, 30 days and, and those numbers continue to grow. The star of tonight's show is Joe Milton. They say you can throw it so fast that there's a space-time continuum, which is apparently where James got that sweatshirt from 1987. Now let's bring in big number seven with the right arm, Joe Milton. What's up, man? How are you? Joe, when you got here, you were the starter and Hendon was the consummate backup teammate. Then you get injured. He comes in. He starts playing really well. Then you're the consummate backup teammate. Correct. So when you're sitting there at South Carolina and he goes down, mm-hmm. take me through your mentality at that point. Because I know you didn't know for sure, but it obviously didn't look great. Correct. So at that point, you, you immediately become the man. It's like, you know, sometimes the president, vice president becomes the president. Right. You became the guy. Take me through the mentality at that point. Uh, well, I mean, every week I had to prepare like I was a starter just because you never know what could happen. So um, when that play happened and I seen him go down, my first reaction was like, oh, man, my brother. There's that cool picture of you all yeah, out there. Yeah. Um, but the first reaction was, oh, man, my brother. Um, like, what happened? Did he just trip? Was it the grass? Was it anything that wasn't that serious? Um, you know, so that was my first thought. My second thought was, all right, man, if he's hurt, I got to get ready. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, not really a get ready. It was like, all right, it's time to go. Let's go. Let's go try to make something happen. Let's go put on for Tennessee. Let's go help my brothers out. Let's go do what I need to do to um, get Tennessee to win or try to win at least. Um, but that was my first two thoughts. Those were my only thoughts. I wasn't thinking about nothing else. It was nothing else in the moment. It was just all, is he okay? If he, if, if not, then what do I need to do? You win the next week at Vanderbilt, <clears throat> and then you get the Orange Bowl bid yes. as a Florida kid. I know we all talk to you about it during bowl season, but looking back, how geeked were you for that? Because, I mean, you get to go kind of go home, right? right. You do. Uh, I was an hour away, so um, it felt great. I knew everybody was going to be there. Um, I knew everybody back at my hometown was going to be watching, um, and I knew it was going to be a big stage for me. Um, I mean, I went to several bowl games so far. I done played in the Peach Bowl. I done played in bowl games like that. But actually starting at a bowl game and versus a, a great team, you know, your your moments kind of – you kind of realize, like, okay, um, dang, this really here. But uh, for me, it was just pretty much like, all right, it's a whole nother day. Let's go have fun. You're, you're so laid back, yeah. jo- Joe Cool. <laughs> like, never seems like nothing bothers right. you. But – how how much more confident in yourself were you? And admittedly, you're pretty self confident. But how much more confident were you in your game going into that Clemson game versus, let's say, going back to when you got the start a year ago? Um, I was way more confident than I ever was, uh, just because I've been in the whole offense. I done seen Hendon play. 
I seen how he reacted to things. I didn't see him, you know, make this offense be successful. Why can't Joe do it? So I said, all right, uh, you give me a month to prepare. <laughs> That's the craziest thing to do. Um, so I took advantage of that. Um, I ended up watching eight full games. I'm talking about every play. Like I watched every play. I can name plays um, that they did against other teams. I can name the coverage they did against the other teams. You just gave me too much time to prepare. That's how. That's what I always say. That's what I told my mom. So I told my dad. They just gave me too much time to prepare. Best throw in that game was it the seed to 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 brew because it felt like that to me. I mean, I thought that was like the perfect window throw. <laughs> um, I mean, you just. I mean, you put it I mean, on. Him. Yeah, I felt comfortable, confident in that throw too as well. But pretty much all of them, I felt confident. Um, I don't know. I feel like my best touchdown was when I turned around and looked at my my family. So I feel like that was the best one. Um, they actually get to see it without. Watching it from a bad view, they saw the back of my jersey. Sure. And then I turned around, gave him a do sign, blew a kiss. Uh, I mean, that was that was pretty dope. That was my favorite play. So we had this conversation back in the summer, and you told me at the time, you know, that the way that Ole Miss game ended last year, mm-hmm. where you come in and relief, and then went down that game too. And and you know, when you ran out of bounds, I think everybody was like, "Ugh." I mean, right. I know, I know, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I cannot believe he ran yeah, out of bounds." Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. and and you said. Man, I, I thought I had more time. Correct. And you said you didn't sleep after that. Like that no. bothered you. That 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 stuck with you. Correct. Do you think it would have been the same way three years ago? Because it feels like you've just kind of continually gotten more mature. The game matters more to you. Yeah. That well, type of stuff. Because I think it, it. You know, when you're the starter and it's everything's right in front of you, you maybe I think everyone takes it for granted a little bit. Then when it's taken away from you, I think you start to learn to appreciate it a little bit more. Correct. So when you get it back, you're like, I don't want to mess up the opportunity. Right. Is, is that kind of um no to be honest with you no it's not like i don't want to mess up thing it's like how can i get better every day um that's how i approach every day i don't let no day go to waste um that's just pretty much how i look at it man it's just like what can you do to get yourself better to be better for tennessee to be better for yourself how can you feel better and like for joe for myself talking to third person is before i go home did i do everything i need to do to win a day and if I didn't, I'm going to go back. I go back to the facility. I make sure I get whatever I need to get in. If I missed anything in the weight room, I'm going to get it in. If I missed anything on the field, I'm going to make those throws. It don't matter what time it is. I don't have to sleep. I'll be fine. It's just what can I do to be better as a person and as a football player? Self-reflecting, were you the same guy at Michigan? Or are you different now? I mean, I got mature. I got older. Yeah. I was 17, 18, sure. 19 years old when I was at Michigan. So it was kind of like I didn't really learn those things, and I still was learning. Like, I'm still learning now today, but when I was 17, 18, 19, it was like, okay, it's like a brush out of the shoulder. I got time. That was pretty much the thing at Michigan. I have time. I redshirted my freshman year, sophomore year. I played four more games. 2020, I started. Then I broke my thumb. It was kind of like, okay, I have time. I got one of those years back. I have time. Now it's just like, okay, you don't have the time that you think you do. You have time, but you don't have time. If you understand what I'm saying, like spring ball is what, in a month? Yep. So it's like, okay, we just got out of season, but spring ball is right here. Like what can Joe do every day to put Tennessee back where we need to be? Hendon and you kind of worked yin and yang last year together. Correct. You got a bunch of younger guys in that room now. Mm -hmm. How does your role change? Um, Does it change? It it doesn't. And how do you and how do you get some of those younger guys, whether it be Nico or Gaston, mm-hmm. those guys to 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 buy in like you two bought in right. as a team? It doesn't. It doesn't change. Nothing change. Um, it's pretty much they have to. I wouldn't say if they have to roll in where we left off because they different. They different from me and Hendon. Um, so I wouldn't say they have to roll in where we left off. They have to add their own swag to the to the juice that we already had, and whatever their swag is, it may be a better thing for Tennessee or it may be a greater thing for Tennessee. You never know until they add their own swag to it. But those guys like Gaston and Nico, man, they, they just learning. They want to learn. They're not one of those guys that just, oh, man, I know it, so leave me alone. They just want to learn. Like, And that's what that's the thing with me and Hendon. Like, we want to learn from our coaches. We, learn, we wanted to learn from Hype. We wanted to know what, everything that he knew about the offense. We want to learn from Coach Mitch. We want to learn from Coach Hosley. And once we got all their information, we put it in our own mind of how we going to intake it and go about it. And then 
whenever I have something that I'm thinking about, I preach it to him or he'll preach it to me. And after we leave our house, it was kind of like, okay, we stuck with it. So whatever, whatever it is, when we left the house, that was, that's what it was going to be. When you look at your game, everybody always wants to talk about the arm. I thought this year in, in relief, they worked you across the middle of the field more than they did a year ago. You know, it just seemed like you, you hit a lot more crossing patterns when you came in games. Um, I know everybody loves to watch the deep ball, but it just seemed like that was some of your – I mean, you just threw some seeds, whether yeah. it be in that one, that first strike when you came into South Carolina, um, you know, or, you know, some of those throws, you know, down the stretch, you know, against Clemson. I mean, you just were, you were firing bullets in uh, there. You Do you like those throws? I do. I like every throw. Uh, I'm a quarterback, so I like every throw. Um, I don't feel like it was pretty much to my coaches, like – um, when I first started throwing across the middle, I had throws across the middle. If you go back and watch the game when I first started, uh, when I first got here, it was pretty much a, a timing thing. Like you have to understand the offense and what the coaches want in the offense. And when I mentioned about Gaston and Nico not wanting to brush brush off like what I'm trying to teach them or what I'm trying to help them with, I was that person. I thought I understood the offense. I thought I understood what the coaches wanted. You know, and it messed me up because I was like, okay, I know it. So now that I start, I can just go do whatever now. I can go make I can make all these throws. But the thing is, what I had to realize was you have to actually have a relationship with your receivers. Yeah. When I first got here, I was like, okay. I was hitting them in practice, but it's a little bit different from game speed. Guys don't really know how my when my drilling is going that I <laughs> throw the ball further. You know, so those guys had to adjust to that. I had to adjust to them. Um, you know, it was like a learning. It was a learning phase. That's why this year was very important for me, because it was it was real deal like a learning phase. Like I wasn't, I was mad that I wasn't starting, but at the end of the day, it was out of my control because I had to be better as a person. So, what can I do? I can help out my brother, help him make the team be more successful, and then call it a day. And then I go home and sleep well. Everybody talks about that arm. What's the best throw you've ever made? And it doesn't have to be even in the game. Mm-hmm. It could be in practice where you're like, wow, well, that was good. Uh, yeah. And it don't have uh, to be here. It could be anywhere, high school, middle school, uh, Michigan, here, wherever. Best throw? I ain't going to lie. Does anything stick out? Yeah. Uh, my best throw of my college career so far was probably either one to brew the post or my post against Indiana at Michigan. I think I remember that throw because I remember yeah. look, looking at the highlights and the Indiana game was the one I watched. Mm-hmm. That was the first. That was my first long touchdown of the season as a starter. Felt great. When you you know when you look at your relationship with Coach Halsey, he moves from quarterbacks coach now quarterbacks coach OC. Yes. You like that? Ain't nothing changed. How is it, Coach Halsey going to be Coach Halsey at the end of the day? He young, cool cat man. He just he like to keep his slate clean. He don't like stressing. He don't like going through all that. You know, he just he just wants you to learn, and he's going to help you, whatever it takes, and he's going to have fun. Like, on the mic <laughs> during the game, he was having fun. Even if it was, wasn't moving the ball how we was supposed to, he still was having fun, but keeping the main thing the main thing. That's why I like Coach Oz, and I respect him so much for it. What's something most people don't know about Joe Milton? Uh, I can play the drums. That's one of my uh, – my side things that I do when I'm um, either mad or in my feelings or just bored. I don't have to turn on the game. I go in my closet and I play on my drum pad. So something kind of just takes you away. Yes. It's kind of just, it's good release, yes. energy. Very relaxing. Very relaxing. What, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Um, I mean, I listen to one person. I know everybody going to hate me for this, but I mean, I listen to one person. I listen to NBA Youngboy pretty much all day. Um, if not, I listen to Mar- uh, Mary J. Blige or Usher uh, or Fantasia. That's my mom's favorite singer. So I listen to her. Um, I know some songs that some women don't know. That's how much I listen to her. So When you're not doing football and you're not doing drums, are you a foodie? Are you- nah, I don't, really, I don't really eat as much during the day. Um, I kind of keep my portions kind of low. Um, depends if I go get Chipotle. I get a lot of protein, a lot of carbs, and then that'll be my biggest meal of the day. And then other than that, I eat fruits or acai bowl. Biggest culture shock thing going – again, you're from Florida. Correct. So it's not like you're a northern northern <laughs> guy, but you went from Michigan to here. Correct. 
What's the biggest the weather. difference? Just the weather? The fans pretty the, the fans are different here. Like at Michigan. Way? At Michigan, if they know you, they wouldn't walk up to you for real. At Michigan. But here, if they know you, they're gonna walk up to you. Yeah, the picture taking autographs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's you just like, like that. It's all right. It just I like doing it for kids. I mean, I like doing it for everybody, don't get me wrong, but like mainly kids though. It means more to kids, yeah. It means more, yes. Like going to read and that's elementary school kids, that type of thing. Like, are you into that kind of yes. thing? I went to the children's hospital today. Um, that was great, too. Uh, my guy Jeremy uh, went through chemo today. He passed. So, uh, awesome. That was great to see. When when you look at, you know, kind of being that role model, mm-hmm. how much do you relish that? I mean, I have to, I have to take on a big role model uh, from the point of me being the oldest child. Um, so I got younger siblings. My younger sibling is one. So I mean it's a it's a huge like stage to complete, but I mean I'm on this earth for a reason, so I feel like I need to do it and I'm gonna have to do it. If you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would it be and why? First person, I say Cam Newton. He's my favorite player. Uh, I mean we talk here and there, so I mean I still want to just have a one-on-one in-person conversation. Um, my second person, Harriet Tubman. Um, I mean, I majored in history at Michigan. Um, I learned a lot um, about, like, slavery. Um, so I just want to know, like, what was she thinking as she, you know, when it went found the North Star? Like, what was she thinking? How did she process that? Um, I feel like that would be my first question to her. I go Jackie Robinson. Nice. I go Jackie Robinson um, because, I mean, he did it all. Um, and, you know, going through those times he went through, like I said, I majored in history, so like all the sports aspect, um, you know, learning a new language from Africa and stuff like that. Like you, you get the grasp of knowing what these people did to help the real become the real today. So, like my process of how did he flush all that? Like how did he get to like not think about the negativity? Like how did he go about his days? Like what was his thought process? Those are three interesting. Yes, I, I love that man. I mean, I, you know, Darnell, big thinker on the football team. Mm-hmm. Now he's, he's he's moved on to the NFL, but I, I like the big thinkers. Like, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's you know, you you took your time. You didn't, you know, you didn't just jump in and say you know three people that were easy. You Correct. different people from different parts of of time. Uh, the the more I talk to you, the more I'm just impressed. I mean, <laughs> I was impressed a year ago. And even then, you were you were more Joe Cool back then, Correct. you know. And 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 I think it, it takes a big man to admit, hey, I I, I looked, you know, I, I thought oh, I know everything, I know everything, and then you realize you didn't. Correct. You know, I mean, a lot of kids, you know, wouldn't wouldn't be able to admit those right. those things. Um, and so like I, I think that you know it just it shows, and and this is you know I, I get this every week from Vol fans that comment, they get to hear kind of stories. And not the story you just told is amazing, um, but like like just kind of getting a deep dive on everybody, whether sure. it's Darnell or Cooper or Sed or Josiah Jordan James or the coaches, um, just kind of getting you know a, a deep dive on you all and letting them get to kind of feel you because I sure. think that that's the thing. Like you know everybody always asks me why do you do so much video stuff and not written word, and I'm like because you can't tell how you're saying it right. in written word. Correct. I mean, I, the perfect writer can. I'm not good enough writer for that. For sure. But it, people just heard how you have, how you've grown. They've heard all these cool, you know, stories for, since you've been here, and they hear how, how you became a you know a history buff, you know, yeah. off of a terrible experience. <laughs> and so, um, switching gears to pro football. Mm-hmm. Did you grow up with a favorite team? Was it the Dolphins? Nah, man. I was. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. My mom and boyfriend at the time liked the Patriots. So uh, that was the only game that was on with Tom Brady. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to be a Patriots fan. But as I got to understand football more and got older, I was like, nah. Just because Tom Brady win, it don't mean I have to be a Tom Brady fan. I'm not a bandwagon. Um, and then I so happy went to Michigan. And then I did my research on that. Tom Brady went there. So I'm like, man, I, ain't, I know I ain't following his footsteps. I know I'm <laughs> not. So, um I mean, growing up as a kid, my favorite team was the Patriots. And then, you know, Cam New came along. Um, then I started being a big Cam New fan. Um, I started liking the Panthers for a while. Um, and then pretty much whatever team he went to, I just started liking them. Um, I was just a big Cam New fan. So then when he went to the Patriots, you were, it was like the best of both worlds. Yeah, I was back. Yeah, I was back. I was back. 
What receivers are you most excited to work with and as we get into the, the spring practice a month from now? I um, mean, you've got some old steadies, you know, Ramel correct, correct. and Brew and, and, and those guys. But then you've got, you know, you know Dante coming in from Oregon. I mm-hmm. mean, you've got some of these freshmen that didn't play a year ago that I know were wanting to take a step this spring. Correct. Who are you most excited about? Pretty much all of them. Like they, it's a good quarter. It's a good quarterback answer. Nah, it's not even a quarterback answer though. This like just football speak. Like this, not even from Joe's point of view. Like this, looking at Tennessee, like all of them, like they all just go to work every day and actually go to work. Like ain't nobody in there putting on twenty five pounds and calling it a day. Ain't nobody going out there jogging a rep and be like, okay, man, I'm tired. I work hard. Everybody's actually like wanting to win. Like after the Orange Bowl, you saw everybody's perspective of Tennessee football change. But our whole perspective, that was that been our perspective of Tennessee football. We want to win. So why can't we why can't we go win? So that's what we ask ourselves. And every day you want to get better. So every time I break it down, it's always on champs. So you, you got into the spring semester here. I know you're leading the throwing sessions. Mm-hmm. How much are you look? How much are you enjoying that to, to to kind of see what some of these new targets can do, though? Oh, I mean it's great. You know, um, you had the opportunity to throw to new guys. You have to adjust throws. You have to know what they don't like and what they do like. You have to hang around these guys. Like I said, like I don't really know Dante like that. But as for spring ball, I know everything about Dante. Oh, when I sat down with Dante at the hotel on his visit, yeah, I said, "When did you know Tennessee was it?" And he goes, "When I saw Joe Milton throw in the <laughs> Orange Bowl." Yeah, he goes, "I'm like, he goes, that's where I want to be." Yeah, you know, you, you you your performance in the Orange Bowl drew some praise from a guy like Derrick Henry on mm-hmm. busting with the boys. He talked about you. Um, when when you hear somebody who's you know done it at the highest level, it's not your position, but at the same time, I mean, Derrick Henry's Derrick Henry. Yeah. Um, you know, another Florida guy um, that played in the SEC. When when you hear a praise like that from a guy like that, does that kind of like? I know you're you're pretty humble, but at the same time, it's like okay, the work the work's paying off. Um, no, I don't look at it like that. Um, just because he said that doesn't mean I have to be different. I have to keep going, like regardless of if he don't say anything or if he did say anything. Like I just got to keep going. That's just my that's just my mentality. Like you just gotta keep going. Like you just gotta keep going. It don't it don't matter who say anything. The president can comment on my name tomorrow, and I still won't. I look at it and still just click to the next post. It doesn't matter. You still gotta keep going regardless. How much do you watch? Do you do? You, how much do you look at Twitter and stuff like I that? I don't have Twitter. Did you get away with it? Did you, did I did get Twitter after my freshman year of college. I haven't had Twitter since. When did you get to town? What, Tennessee? Yeah. April. April? Yes. When you got here, what what what's and, and that's April of twenty twenty one. Correct. What's what's that thought process like? New state, new city, new people. Who is Joe gonna be? Who's Joe Milton now? <laughs> Great person, intelligent, smart, um, cool, laid back. You, you become the face of the team, Correct. you know, um, and, and you know, big big smile. Mm-hmm. You know, it's okay to flash it. Um, <laughs> big smile, big arm. Yeah. Um, you're out there doing college game day, making half court shots. How much basketball did you play in high school? Any? Uh, actually, at my high school in Orlando, that was my first sport that was played. It was basketball because when I got there, it was after the football season. So basketball was my first sport at the high school that I went to in Orlando. So, uh, but I didn't play as much. Um, what was your game? What, what, describe I'm your dunker, basketball. Man. You're just dunker. I mean, I can shoot now. Don't get me wrong, but I like dunking the ball. Um, if I get mad, I'd be jumping out the gym. Like, I, if you try to get a rebound, I'd probably jump over you and put it in and then hang on the rim. I don't know if my, like, my, athletic, my athleticism, like, on the court is kind of, like, weird. I can jump from, like, the free throw still make a dunk. I could jump. I could take a big step or three steps and still dunk. It doesn't really matter. I just really just try to put the ball in the rim. Do you do you enjoy going to the basketball games, the baseball games? Is and is that something you probably embrace more this spring as the face of the the program 
uh, you know, to to be interactive with fans, to be out and about, to uh, that type of thing. Is that something you want to do? You like to do? I mean, if it comes to the community, like like I did today, the Children's Hospital. But other than that, man, I stay in the house. I stay out the way. Um, I don't know, man. I I like to stay in the house. You're a dog guy. What, what, what kind of My dog, dog you in got? boarding school now. He just uh-huh. went to school today. Uh, what, what kind of dog is this? A pit bull. Yeah. Uh, Bubba just went to school today for the first day. Um, you know, I just wanted to have him have him a better life uh, so he can wander around and do whatever he want to do and still feel no harm to others or people don't. How feel old harm is he? He too. He about to be three in April. I remember when you did the when you when you did the. Tennessee Prime this year, yeah, and, and like I wasn't on that show. Hubs was on, and his Hubs was like Joe's like taking the dog out to use the bathroom on the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's my man. That's my boy right there. Yeah, I had him since he was four weeks, so you know, just making sure that he gets what he wants. Just because I have what I want doesn't mean he's happy. I mean, he happy if we win or lose, he doesn't know. But at the end of the day, I want to make sure he's actually happy. Hendon's gone. How much you guys still talking? Every day. Every day. <laughs> Every little break we get, we'll probably text or call, uh, talk ball. You know, he's going through his NFL media. So, you know, I like to hear what's going on. Um, I'll be in that same position a year from now. Yeah, so. What kind of questions are they asking in those meetings? Crazy questions. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you get, you kind of get a, you know, and I know it'll change a little bit a year from now, but yeah, you're yeah, still yeah. getting a feel for how extreme yeah, yeah, they yeah, get yeah. with it. I mean, you just got to be more. Short detail, I put it like that. You have to be short and precise. Like, you can't have, like, those long explanations and thinking it's going to go somewhere. Like, you have to really be short and precise. That's the best way to explain it. All right, let's go rapid fire here for a minute. Talk to me. Favorite TikTok trend? Do you have one? Favorite TikTok trend? I don't know. I just like, uh, I ain't going to say the hip. The hip stuff, the hip dance, but pretty much whatever the um, excuse me, whatever like the um, the Philly boys be doing, the Philly boys they be going crazy. Uh, I don't know, I like that part. Um, then like the the young boy memes be funny. Uh, whenever people be jumping out their trampoline and punching the grass, that jump be funny. Uh, that's pretty much it. Video game you're best at? Call of Duty. I go crazy on Call of Duty, Warzone. My highest kill is forty-two. You, you've got May mini term, you know, in a couple of months after mm-hmm. spring practice. Will you take time to get away for just a week or so, just to kind of reset? Because the, you get into summer grind, fall grind, just to kind of have a hey, let's have a hard reset and get ready to go for the for the big push. I feel like I had that hard reset already uh, my after great, the bowl game when my great granny passed. Okay, so I feel like I had that hard reset. I don't need no more reset. Grandparents. They're yes. the best, buddy. They are. Love mine. Don't have any more left. Man. Cherish them while you got them. Neither. When you look at this season, what's your motto? Gotta go. Gotta, Gotta go, Joe. Going. Gotta go. What game do you look more forward to most? Them. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much all of them. Like, seriously. I mean, it's my last year of college football. You have to enjoy every moment. Do you like road games better than home games? Sometimes, yes. It depends on where. Just because you can acquire their fans, you can see their fans leaving. I mean, that's pretty dope. If you being people at home, at their like home, the LSU stadium, game this year, yeah, like their fans left. It was nobody in the stands in third quarter. Nobody. It was all Tennessee fans third quarter. Like I was looking around. Like I didn't play that game, so I was just looking around, and I'm like, dang, that's really sad. They're really going home. It's early. If you weren't a football player, what would you be in sports? If I wasn't a football player, what would I be in sports? Baseball player. Pitcher? Nah. Center field? Middle field, yeah. If you weren't an athlete, what would you do? I wasn't an athlete. I make music. If you, if your playing career just abruptly ended, do you think you could be a coach? Yes. Absolutely. I, man, I'd be the best offensive coordinator in the game right now. Just now, that's real talk. Just throw the wheel route, Joe. It's always open. <sighs> See that's <laughs> <laughs> But nah, I'll be the best offensive coordinator in the game right we'll, now. We'll route the Jabari. It's always open. 
They don't even have a wheel route in this offense. I'm like, it don't even feel like. You don't know what we got in this offense <laughs> right here. <laughs> how, um, how much has it grown well, since you first got here, the offense? It hasn't well, grown. I've grown. So you think the offense is the exact same. It's just you've, you, you've, you've grown. I've understand it the way that they want me to understand it in a way that I need to understand it to be successful. Yes. When your playing career is done, whether that's next year, 15 years in the NFL, what will you remember most about playing football, playing at Tennessee? Dang, that's a hard one, too. Uh, what would I remember most? If Hollywood's writing the script to the Joe Milton football career, mm-hmm. what's next year look like for you? I don't know, man. I'm not that type of person. You know me. I'm very humble, so whatever guy I have in store, um, I don't pretty much – speak things into existence. I don't like doing that. So whatever God has in store. Well, Joe, we appreciate the time, my man. Tennessee fans have got a great look at you, who you are, big smile, obviously the big arm. And I know Tennessee fans are excited to see you get going this spring and get going next fall. Yes, sir. You know, one final year with big number seven, Joe Milton, this week's Ball Club Confidential, episode 12. Episode 12.